All right, welcome back to One Man's Faith, part number three. Now we're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we have looked at the fact in verse 18, he says, we have been reconciled to God. In other words, uh, now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through the Messiah and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, verse 19, that God was in the Messiah reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. We are to be reconciled to each other, and we are to spread abroad that God loves us, that God wants to be reconciled, that God wants to have that relationship restored that was broken at the fall 4,000, 5,000 years ago. That's the word of reconciliation that God has given us, the ministry uh, of, of reconciliation. Yeah. yeah, he has given to us the ministry of reconciliation, he says in verse 18 the ministry of reconciliation, that we are to be reconciled to our brothers and sisters and to God and to tell them they are to be. We are to proclaim. Is that, is that the word used here? No, that's in, that, that's in the other verse we're going to look at. But we are to proclaim it because he's given, he's committed to us the word of reconciliation. Okay? So this is the ministry we have. Therefore, when you see a therefore, you find out what it's there for. All right, this is two verses in a row now we're, 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 we're seeing or in the same passage. Therefore, what's the therefore, therefore? It's a, he says we are ambassadors for the Messiah. Why? Because we've been reconciled to him and we've been given the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we're ambassadors. And an ambassador represents the country that he is from and an ambassador of. Okay, uh, I was in Washington, D.C. a couple of weeks back. And um, I was staying at a motel or, or hotel that was close to what is called Embassy Row. Down Embassy Row are a lot of embassies of other nations, you know, kind of stacked side by side, very close together. But that property is the property of that country. I can't act like an American and walk on that property and do things that would be normal here, but not normal there. I would come under their laws. It's the same for us. We are ambassadors. What is our, ambass our embassy? Really, it's every place on which your foot has tread, I have given it to you. The world. is our embassy. God said, every place on which your foot is tread, I've given it to you. So everywhere we go, every place we step is now under the kingdom of God. That is our function, is to even bring in the kingdom, to cause the world to come under the kingship of God. It's supposed to be totally different than what it was before we showed up. Sure, there may be pockets where you haven't walked yet, but you carry the word of reconciliation, and because of that, you are ambassadors. It's, it's as though God, he says in verse 20, were making an appeal through us. He is making an appeal through us that on behalf of the Messiah, that we tell people to be reconciled to God. We represent Jesus. You are the only person that some people may see that would come close to being like Jesus. 
are you doing that? How much of Jesus, matter of fact, if someone looked at you or if someone who works with you, would they know that you're a Christian? Do you have enough evidence against you to be, to be considered a Christian? Is your actions, are your words, are how you operate, are they within the confines of of what God expects from us? Are you stealing a bunch of pens or pencils from your office and saying, I need these? Hey, I've worked here for a long time. I, I, I can take some of this stuff. Are you putting more time on your time card than you should? Are you just feeling like you don't want to go to work and you call in sick? Do you grumble and complain about your boss or some of your coworkers? All these things are worldly, not kingdomly. Whatever you do at work, it should be done as if you're doing it unto the Lord. We should be 150% committed to the job that we have. Backing our bosses, doing the best we can. You know, we even have the ability to come up with ways to solve problems where we're at, if we'll do it. If we'll listen to God, if we'll say, God, Lord, give me a word. Give me a word of knowledge in how to handle this situation. I know a man, uh, I gave out a, well, I didn't, it, I didn't mean it as a challenge, but he took it as this. Uh, I said, if your dream doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. Do you hear that? If your dream doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. You see, our dream should be God-sized so that we know that we cannot accomplish them without Him, no matter what it is. If we can do it, then it's not big enough. And He took that challenge and he started to pray and said, okay, God, give me bigger visions. Give me bigger dreams. And all of a sudden, he started having this dream about something that they developed that they could use in a way that would bring... Uh, how do I want to say it? that could boost their business and bring more profit. And uh, it, they, oh man, I don't know how much I want to get into this. Uh, they developed a product that can be I guess it can be franchised is that the word I want through a, through a sports team that would be different than uh, than almost any other product available and not only that, but then the Lord started downloading other things into him about, oh, we could carry that to this. Oh, what if we had a contest where if someone had a certain thing, they would get a certain thing from the team? Oh, maybe we could even have some of the team come and, and, and 
give out autographs or even sign this thing. You know, you know there, you know there were a lot of things. The Lord just started downloading those things into him. That's what's supposed to happen to us because we're different from the world. See, God wants to put us in places of responsibility in the different areas of the world that would help bring God back into our world. We've gotten away from it. We've allowed others, I've, I've mentioned this before, we've allowed others who are not Christians to come up with ideas that will change our world. Why aren't we coming up with these? Why aren't people in the church coming up with these ideas? It doesn't look like we have. Look, who, who is more, who's more popular in, in uh, electronics? What's the, you know, what's the one of the main <laughs> telecommunication devices? And he wasn't a Christian. Why weren't we involved in that? You see, we've, we've given up. Instead of marching forward and, and, and uh, bringing development to the world, we're sitting back on our haunches waiting for Jesus to come. And the only thing the Bible really tells us is we have got to be ready for when he does come, but that doesn't mean we give up and let the word world go to hell in a handbasket. No! We need to start praying, Lord, show us. Show us ways to bring honor to you, profit to your kingdom, and advance the kingdom into areas that, have, that we have fallen back on. I've mentioned this before, there, there are seven areas, there are seven areas that touch our lives in all ways, and we are barely working in those areas, and we need to be. Gosh, i got to take a break, so let's take this break. I'll be right back. 